want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Mumbray here for JoeBlow.com, and guess where I am? The Overlook Film Festival in Mount Hood, Oregon, in one of the hotels that The Shining was set at. This is a genre film festival where some of the coolest indie horror movies are showing, and tonight they had a secret screening of a much-anticipated horror film, which was strongly rumored to be the film It Comes at Night from A24, and sure enough, that's what it was. Now, It Comes at Night is about two families which band together in the aftermath of a horrific plague, trying to survive day to day in a world where compassion can be the greatest weakness of all. Now, all of you have no doubt seen the It Comes at Night trailer. It's one of the most popular ones that we put on our YouTube channel lately, and it's very effective, very creepy. Now, how's the movie itself? In my opinion, It Comes at Night is the movie that's going to put the Overlook Film Festival on the map. A secret screening, this much anticipated film, is something that would be a daring choice, I think, for an upbeat genre audience. And it really whipped them into a state of shock, but did so without resorting to cheap scares or gore. In some ways, it reminded me of the reaction to the Get Out at the Sundance Film Festival, where it was also shown as a secret screening. Now, these are totally different types of films, but they played their audience in the same way. It Comes at Night, to me, really does have the makings of a real sleeper hit. It Comes at Night does something quite sinister, in that it puts you right in the shoes of good people forced to do monstrous things in order to survive, illustrating one of the great truths in John Cinema, that the greatest threat still comes from other people. Now, I know what you're thinking, doesn't The Walking Dead say this every other week? Well, it's a little different here. Produced by A24, a company that's had tremendous success with elevated genre, including The Witch and Ex Machina, this beautiful, evocative film certainly has the potential to be a big breakout, as it's the absolute antithesis of summer blockbusters, with the horror being absolutely psychological, meaning no cheap scares, as you would see in The Walking Dead. For all, for as good as that show is, it does often resort to that, or kind of melodrama. It Comes Night doesn't do any of that. No matter how viciously anyone acts during the movie, you know, maybe even hope that were you put in a similar situation, you'd do the same, because everybody here is just protecting the people that they love. Written and directed by Trey Edward Schultz, who previously directed the art house hit Cretia, It Comes at Night is a confident, assuredly assembled second feature. No small feat because he tackles some really heady subject matter. Now, in order to save the film, I'm not going to go too much into plot. Suffice to say, though, in this world, a plague-like illness has swept through the population, and one family, headed by Joel Edgerton and Carmen Nijogo, with Kelvin Harrison Jr. as their son, is forced to team with another, headed by Christopher Abbott and Riley Kehoe, in order to survive, even though there's always the threat that the balance of power has to be maintained between the two alphas, which is Edgerton and Abbott. Now, both men are terrific, with Joel Edgerton also producing. This is shattering on the same level that George Edgerton's own The Gift was, and anyone who liked that movie would be really well advised to check this out. As for Christopher Abbott, he's got a really solid part, maybe the best that he's had since James White, as a young family man, rough-edged in the same way that his character James White was, but given a family man sensibility that's new, making this arguably his most mature performance to date. Now, Carmen and Joker and Riley Kehoe, they're wonderful as the wives, but they do get short-shifted a bit next to Edgerton and Abbott, although Kehoe's climatic scene may be the best in the film. The big breakout star here, though, is Kelvin Harrison Jr. as Edgerton and Ijogo's teenage son. Now, he's painted as a compassionate guy, but this is what almost makes him a threat to his family, as he just wants to do right by everyone. And he's really a moving character, especially the way his beloved dog is his only solace, and it leads to some really heartbreaking moments. But is it scary? Now, it Comes at Night is definitely a film that I would call more unsettling than straight up scary, although there's an ongoing motif about Harrison's character being haunted by nightmares, and these are truly shocking on a visceral level. They're shocking to watch and intriguingly photographed in different aspect ratios, 185 as opposed to the 235 to 1 scope of the rest of the film. It's a subtle but effective touch. Schultz's team from Cretia, which was his debut feature, join him here, including composer Brian McComber and DP Drew Daniels, and do excellent work. In the Q&A, Schultz mentioned working on Midnight Special, and that Jeff Nichols got him Edgerton, and in some ways his style is kind of similar, in that this is a deceptively quiet, introspective film, and a slow burn, yet the payoff is big, and the journey is never less than absorbing, and this, along with Get Out, proves that horror as a genre for A-level legit work is back in full force, and I give this one a strong 8 out of 10.
It's one of the best John movies of the year, and I can't wait for everyone to see it in June. Until next time, I'm Chris Bumbray, signing off from the Overlook Film Festival. You're still here. It's over. Go home. You expect a you know, Sam Jackson show up with an eye patch and a saucy little leather number? Go.